where have we gone wrong? And I guess the question is, what's the foundation, the basis for why insulin is consistently high and elevated and causing more damage, specifically talking about what's our dietary habits that have changed over time. And the biggest foundation we think is the elephant in the room, but we're just not talking about it. Yeah. In standard medicine. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, in fact, I, to start with the end of your question first, the reason most physicians aren't speaking about this is because they never learned it. Uh, and, and I say that with actually a little bit of compassion because one, we can't expect everyone to be omnipotent as much as I understand human metabolism. I don't understand uh, radiology, you know, for example, or I would be useless in a pathology lab. And so it's not fair to expect a person to know everything. And we only know what we've either learned on our own or, or been taught. So, so with that, with that view in mind, you actually presented the question very well by, by mentioning elevated insulin. There are, there are multiple causes of insulin resistance and, and just for the sake of clarity and leaving the audience with the most actionable Intel here, I would say that the most common relevant cause of insulin resistance is too much insulin. Now that, that sounds like a little bit of a paradox or it sounds a little confusing, but it is in fact, I think a little intuitive, but also reflective of a fundamental biological principle, which is too much of something will result in a resistance to that something. And it, you know, we could you look at the uh, metaphor of standing next too close to a, the speakers at a rock concert with too much volume comes a deafness to that mm. volume. And so when we have too much of something, caffeine, a drug, antibiotic, when there's too much of it, we become resistant to it. The same goes with insulin. And then as you noted, that of course is heavily influenced by diet. When we are eating a diet that is constantly spiking our insulin, we become resistant to that insulin. And that of course then points the finger at carbohydrates, particularly refined carbohydrates. But even as I say that, people are thinking, of carbohydrates that come in a bag or a box with a barcode. And yet this very week, a paper was published where the singular intervention was to have people eat two cups of fruit every day. That's all they told them to do. Add two cups of fruit to your normal diet. And at the end of the eight weeks, one of the only changes was that they were significantly, statistically significantly more insulin resistant than they were before they started. So even these so-called unprocessed carbohydrates are not benign. The more the substance is increasing your blood glucose, the more it's going to increase your insulin. And the more you're doing it more frequently and more dramatically with more sugary or processed carbohydrates, the more you're going to be descending to that level of metabolic purgatory. Now, as a medical doctor, we're basically taught that a Mediterranean diet, lots of fruits and vegetables, and three to six meals a day. And I'm just wondering when you talk about the cups of fruit, might it be that we're just simply telling people to eat too much too frequently, or there's too much food in our environment, which is our one of our biggest problems. And how do we combat that and make changes to that? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good question. In, in fact, I even appreciate you mentioning the Mediterranean diet. I can't help but chuckle at, for every one person there is to invoke the term Mediterranean diet, there's a different version of the Mediterranean mm -hmm. diet. It's when I lived in Russia many, many years ago, I remember one of the expressions, there are as many types of borscht as, as there are babushki to make it. So there, every grandma, every babushka will make her own version of borscht. Every person who mentions the Mediterranean diet will have a different idea in mind. So the, the intervention here, uh, in fact, one of the comments you made about the frequency of eating, I think is one thing we've gotten perfectly wrong, uh, where we simply eat too frequently. The more we are eating, especially foods with refined carbohydrates, the more we are going to be spiking our insulin. And insulin will take longer to come down than glucose will. Even if we see glucose come down after three hours or so, the insulin hasn't yet. It's not, it's not mm. done yet. And so many people are spending every waking moment with elevated insulin because they're never giving it time to come down. And, and not, to, not to say that there aren't some principles of the Mediterranean diet. I'm generally an advocate of whole foods. Uh, the more the food has been processed, but even as I noted in the study, simply adding fruit to the diet was enough. That singular variable was enough. 
And then one other comment on carbohydrates, it just happens to be the one class of macronutrient that humans have a hard time moderating. Every licensed dietitian, it's almost like when they earn their license, they have tattooed in their brain the, the mantra of moderation in all things, stated with an almost religious fervor, as, as if it's in fact scripture. It's not, although the Apostle Paul, I think, comes close to saying that kind of idea. But it doesn't work when you talk about addictions. In fact, the nature of addiction suggests an impossibility to moderate. And, and it is absolute reality, human biology, that there are people who are addicted to carbohydrates. And so the more we have a food culture that one, doesn't want to acknowledge food addiction, and two, is based on those very foods that are addictive, namely carbohydrates, the more we're going to continue to have the problem. And everyone, in, everyone knows this in, intuitively, they feel this. No one listening is, is ever sitting around on a Friday night craving a plate of bacon and eggs it doesn't happen they want something sweet and gooey or salty and crunchy and so the problem with the carbohydrate crazed culture is that many people can't moderate